Hey there, I'm Mike. <laughs> and I'm Matt. And I'm Jody. The Wild Health Podcast is our quest into human performance, longevity, and personalized medicine. Together, along with experts in these fields, we'll learn how to live longer, better, and become smarter and stronger. We'll do the deep dive into the research and hard work of putting it all together, and you reap the benefits. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wild Health Podcast. We are back again today with Dr. Mark Goodman, Director of Sports Performance Optimization or something like that. Hello. As well as Denny Dragon, our physical therapist, friend, colleague, uh, physical therapist to the stars, I guess you could say. <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> he's uh, as I mentioned on the last podcast, the man responsible for the mobility in my shoulder, which is, I would say, probably about like 98.75% since my rotator cuff repair. And, and that's one reason we wanted to have him on the podcast today, uh, because if we could prevent you from having a rotator cuff repair, then that would probably be the best thing we could ever give you in your entire life. Uh, just speaking from experience. And there's this thing called scapular activation, which kind of goes along with what we had Denny on the podcast for last time, glute activation. So we want to talk a little bit about what that is, why it's important, and how it could prevent you from going under the knife. Well, thanks for coming, Denny. So, you know, we share some common patients as far as the sports med side of things and the rehab side of things, what you're doing in PT. And one of the common things that I see in clinic is people that come in with shoulder pain that we think is probably related to impingement or a rotator cuff problem. And I wanted to get your opinion on kind of what are the underlying factors leading to people to impinge and what kind of biomechanical things can we be doing to help with their treatment? Yeah, that that's, that's a good question because um, it's another one of those areas that is tricky for people. And I, you know, I've been doing this a long time and the stuff that's out there on shoulders is so inaccurate that I, I don't even know where it comes from, really. Um, you'll hear, hold your shoulders back and down and they never do that. Like there's not one sport I could think of where you're holding your shoulder like that. And so most people, what happens is if you hold your shoulders back and down, um, so think of your shoulder like this, your shoulder blade and your, and your arm bone, your humerus are what make up the joint. They have to move together. If the arm moves without the shoulder moving, like or going or the scapula rotating, that's how I look at it. You're going to impinge it. And that means like, you know, impingement means you're lifting your arm and you're catching your rotator cuff muscle your bicep or the bursa. Okay. So you're kind of getting an impingement of those three things. So I always think of like, okay, what do you, what do you got to do with the shoulder? You're trying to teach it to move. If I was going to catch a ball and it was way up in the air, my shoulder would go as high up as I could reach. So by the time you reach into say even a cupboard and you're halfway up like 90 degrees, your shoulder should be up a couple inches. So they don't ever stay down. They move, shoulders are designed to just keep moving. They're not they're That's why we could throw. That's why we could do all the cool things we do. You're not trying to stabilize it. You're trying to teach it to move properly. And so when you're thinking about this, you know, you think about me that the humeral head is being kind of the golf ball sitting on the T and the T is the glenoid. Yeah. And what you, what you're saying, I think is that instead of the T being fixed just in one position and not moving with all the rotation coming through the, the ball or the humerus, that they're moving together and they have to kind of cooperate in order to get your arm and your shoulder into the position where you need to go. Is that, is that yes. kind of what okay. Yes. And, and so there's, you know, there's, we should clarify for people, there's four muscles that are collectively called the rotator cuff muscles. Okay. Those are always controlling how that ball moves in the socket they give you, they give you that little subtle, like we don't even know we have them until they're injured. (laughs) You know, that's how they kind of work, but we know the deltoid, we know your upper trap, lower trap. We know, well, no one, no one goes to the gym and like, I'm just working out my subscap today. Yeah. No one does it. Right. But they probably should. Right. I mean, that's what you should be doing at the gym realistically. If you want to have like longevity and be able to do your sport for a long time. Yeah. Like the, it's actually, it's funny. That's the only thing I do. And then I do, I do sports to try to get the other muscles if I can, you know, like, so I think of like your, your scapula rotates upward as your arm goes up. 
So let's uh, let me just clarify a couple of words because we're throwing some words okay. out like everybody knows their anatomy. So scapula is shoulder blade, yes. right? So that's the thing on your back that you know everybody knows what your shoulder blade is. I don't need to explain what that is. Hopefully, if not, go Google it. Um, and then glenoid is that's sort of like the socket that the humeral head sits in, and it's made up by kind of like the scapula mostly, right? But also there's the clavicle coming in and the chromium. There's so there's a lot of bone bony structures going on. But the idea and what you guys are getting at is when you move your humerus, your upper arm bone, then if you don't pick up your scapula and move it up as well, don't activate it, then you can catch a rotator cuff or some of your tendons on sort of the acromion or parts of the bony structures of the shoulder, right? Exactly. Yep. So we, we call that impingement. And you know, I think in my experience, impingement and rotator cuff tendonitis and subacromial bursitis are kind of like what we talked about in the hip. When these are can all be kind of a common pathway of a similar problem. You know, you can see rotator cuff tendonitis or tendinopathy, impingement, and subcranial bursitis all resulting from how you move your shoulder. And we start by treating a lot of them, at least from my standpoint, medically, kind of the same. And that's working with Denny and people like him to work on how your shoulder's moving. So what are, what are some kind of easy ways that someone could identify if they're not moving their shoulder correctly or retracting their scapula or if they've got disordered movement in their shoulder. So when you, you know, I'll have people just look in the mirror and lift their arm to like 90 degrees, like you're reaching up into a cupboard, take the other hand and just put it on your shoulder. If it doesn't move at all, you're not activating your scapular upward rotators. You know, think, think of like by the time you get to 90, where your arm is up somewhat by your by your, you know, like just 90 degrees is pretty easy to see, but your shoulder should be up by your chin. Okay. So I always think like if, if you've done sports, like if you were going to shoot a basketball, by the time you got to 90, your shoulders just go up. They never stay down. But we we're so accustomed to working on computers down that we tend not to move our shoulders anymore. And I think you know, most people are actually better when they go to do sports because because you couldn't you couldn't shoot a hundred basketballs without moving your shoulder. Um, the oh, go so, ahead. So just to clarify, Denny, you, are you talking about just shrugging your shoulder up when you pull your arm up? It's, is it that simple? I mean, do I I just basically the, do a shrug as I'm lifting my arm? It is, but you gotta you know, but you gotta make it look smooth. So if you just, sometimes if you do a shrug and it's going more towards your ear you're activating more, say, your upper trap. So let's talk about the, so the muscles that rotate your, your scapula up, they're your, one called your straightest anterior, upper trap, and lower trap. Those are your three scapular upward rotators. So it is a shrug, but you're, you know, the cool thing about the shoulder is if you're lifting it and you're, and it looks awkward, it is awkward. Like, it, it's like, you don't have to guess it when you're looking in a mirror, but I always just try to try to get it where I'll look in the mirror and I'll try to make sure I'll put my fingers on the shoulder and try to this know that it's elevating towards the ceiling as you're reaching and try to get that to look smoother and smoother. So you're trying to get the timing. So your your humerus and that shoulder blade move at the same time. Now, when when you read about it in textbooks, they'll be like, Oh, at 180 degrees. So when you're reaching as high as you can, the scapula rotates 60 degrees, but there's no way you could feel that or see that. Um, so I always try to this make, it looks one-to-one -one when you're, when you're reaching up. So as you're elevating your arm, your shoulders, just like gliding up your shoulder is what, what lifts your arm. Your arm isn't really the, the main muscle that's doing it. Like, that's what creates the impingement usually. So when we talk about scapular dyskinesis, is that kind of what you're yeah, talking exactly, about? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And people, people, oh, they, you know, you'll hear the term scapular stabilization all the time. So like, say you're carrying in a bag of groceries, then that's when the scapula is still, you're not moving because your arm's at your side. So, but you don't want your shoulders to drop. So when you look in, say in a mirror or something, they should look square. So between your, the way your head is and your shoulder should be 90 degrees. If it's below that, you're dropping your shoulder too much. So let's say when you're carrying something, you're trying to barely lift your shoulders up. That gives you the power. Your power comes more proximal than distal. 
when you're moving your arm, if your arm moves away from your body, your shoulder has to move. For instance, like, I don't know if people remember doing the old, like where you're just doing the circles. The circles are not from your, you know, if you're holding your arms out to the side and you're doing circles, they're not from your hand, they're from your shoulder. So your shoulder's designed to move. Um, I don't know if that's a good way to say it, but most people, if you've had them put their arms out to the side and say, do some circles, they're just moving their, their, their wrist and their hand. They're not really moving from the shoulder. Shoulder blades never stay still. As soon as you move, your shoulder blade moves. If you move one too fast without the other, you're gonna get an impingement or you're gonna get your rotator cuff muscles to shut down. And so when you start seeing impingement symptoms or rotator cuff problems, what's your kind of initial step to work to get that person better and get them back to doing whatever activity they wanna be doing? So this is someone say, say they come in, they got just a little shoulder pain, but you test them and their strength seems okay, but they're still getting pain. That's what we see a lot of. Um, those, the only thing I teach them is how to move that scapula upward. Now, once and, they get, so you're saying upwards, cause the, the classic teaching is always, you know, we're hold holding back. our shoulders too far anterior. You need to get down and back and, and, yes. the and this is like, this is a far cry from that. So you're it, thinking up with the shoulder and the scapula. Yeah. So okay. the, you know, the holding it backwards, say like you're, you know, that classic military posture really what you're doing is you're still lifting your thoracic spine upward. Like it's thoracic extension, but it's not really scapular retraction, meaning like you're pinching your shoulder blades. So shoulder blades rotate up. The only time they move back is like when you're pulling something like a bow or like a, like a row, they might go more back. Uh, but overall they, any reaching or going up away from your body, your shoulder blade is rotating upward. Um, I can't even uh, think of a time where it really rotates down hard unless you're, unless, I mean, especially from an injury standpoint, um, I've never had someone come in and they're, they're too much upward rotated. Like it's a classic, oh, I'm holding my shoulders too high, but I've never, ever seen it. Like, I can't think of one patient where I've seen someone where they're holding their, you know, they'll talk about, oh, my shoulders are by my ears. But if you really look at them. You're not holding your shoulders even at 90 degrees. You're always below. So to get the tension even off your neck, you got to lift your shoulder. So are, are there one or two kind of easy exercises someone could do at home to work on that rotation of the shoulder and that elevation? And Yeah. So, you know, the, the classic things you see are rotator cuff where you get bands and you're holding your arm by your side and you're going, you're rotating your arm in and out with these bands. So that always gets your rotator cuff stronger, but in order to reach better, you got to practice reaching, you know, like people, it's so habit like that people leave their shoulders down that I got to give like a hundred reps a day to get it. Like they're like, you have to go, okay, look in the mirror. Every time you go to the bathroom, like do 10 to 20 reps and make that shoulder go up in the air. Like I always think like you're reaching as high as you possibly can reach, you know? So one of the things I do is I'll have people reach as high as they can, put their hand on top of their shoulder. And then you, if you're a listener right now, wondering if you're the only person moving your arm, we're all doing it too. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody at it the is, table right now is currently moving their arm. So if I reach as high as I can, I put my, my finger on that, on that bone that you feel on the top and you leave your hand there and you put your arm down, it's up above your chin. So by the time you're halfway up, your shoulder should be half of that distance, okay? So I don't know if that's making sense to you, but you, if you don't lift from these muscles, the, so the, the upper trap, it's big for a reason, kind of like the glute, like we were talking about. The upper trap is your power muscle, you know? Like lower traps, they're, they're big muscle groups that you're supposed to be using. So when people are holding them down and back, they can't activate. They actually just get sore because they're made to move you, not stabilize you. So there's, you know, there's definitely muscles that are stabilizers and mu muscles that are movers and trap. That's the power one. They're movers. So people are, are getting their, that's what you were talking about earlier, how they, they don't know how to activate the right muscles. So activating the 
trap and then working on reaching overhead yeah. would be kind of a good starting point for someone yeah. that has some of this yeah scapular and so in the gym i always think yeah in the gym i always think of like you know if you're laying on a ball or off a bench and you're doing they call them like y's and t's where you're lifting from your shoulder blades in like a what like you're making a y so you're laying on your stomach off a ball thumb up doing doing these y's and t's they activate the right muscles but again doesn't teach you to move right. Most people, like all all people come in all the time, they're like, I don't know, I could, you know, I could go play golf, but I can't reach for a couple, you know, get in the cupboard. Like that's kind of what you see. So they might have a great golf swing because they're moving correctly. Like if you went to swing a golf club, you'd never try to leave your shoulders still. You just wouldn't do it. So a lot of people are way better sports wise than they are just in everyday life. Maybe that's why my golf game is so bad. <laughs> right? You're trying to stabilize. Yeah. yeah. That's why I don't play golf. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, I think that this uh, definitely lends itself to another video. So um, if it's all right with you, Denny, why don't we record another video that we can put on Instagram and, and post and link to on this podcast so that people can actually see what you're talking about and not have to try to like imagine it in their minds. Yeah, ex- ac- that'd be excellent. Awesome. These are one of those things where you once you see it, you're like, oh, and almost everyone I teach, they're like, why would I leave my shoulder down? They don't even get that they do it once they get it. And then, you know, cause really when you're in pain, as soon as you move correctly, if it's just impingement, it almost goes away. Yeah. And there, there was a couple of studies that have been coming out too, showing kind of non-surgical versus, um, surgical treatment for impingement. And one of those showed really no significant change in outcomes at two years. And I think when we look at that, probably a big part is the physical therapy and focusing on that movement at the scapula as far as avoiding a surgery and kind of keeping people out of trouble. So I think that's a, a key piece of that outcome as well. So we'll put a video online with some. Yeah, uh, and I'd agree. And, and then, you know, there's always those people that have had rotator cuff and even even those people like you're way less likely to re-injure it once you move well, too. So it goes that way. Um, Awesome. Thanks a lot, Denny. Well, uh, let's, let's record a video and we'll have to find another excuse to have you on the podcast sometime soon. This has been great. All right. Thanks for having me. We hope you like listening to the podcast as much as we like making it. If you think it's valuable, share it with somebody, send to someone you think would really benefit and leave us a five-star review in iTunes. Those reviews really, really help us out. Find us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at WildHealthMD. If you didn't like, well, why are you still listening? Email us and let us know what we can do better. But the best way you can thank us for our time is to leave a review and share. Until next time.